In this lecture segment, we'll look at binary file I.O. Uh, using the Unix system calls for file I.O. as an example, although other operating systems offer very similar calls. This and the following segments assume you are familiar with the use, not necessarily the detailed contents of, but at least the use of the uh, file type, F-I-L-E capitals, the standard error stream, and the standard C I.O. functions F open, F scan F, F print F, get C, put C, get care, put care, and F close. Review and or look those up if you need to. If you have prior background in binary file I.O., some of this lecture may be review, but look it over carefully anyway to be sure you understand all the details. We'll include some important deeper advice about binary uh, input and output. Now, until now, all the file I.O. discussed in this and prior courses has involved reading or writing files of text, files you could bring up in an editor or print to screen. The library functions, f open, f scan, f print, f get c, put c, and f close, do such file I.O., textual file I.O., and you use them in a way very similar to the standard print f, scan f, put f, uh, put care, I'm sorry, and get care that operate on the keyboard and the screen. You're just replacing keyboard and screen with input file and output file. Let's call this text file I.O. Text file I.O. is actually a specialized type of file I.O., using files to contain readable text. But files are a more general concept than just text holders. A file in Unix, Windows, OS X, or any other current operating system is an indexed series of bytes on disk or some other storage medium. It's akin to an array of unsigned cares in C. And like the unsigned care elements of such an array, the bytes of a file need not contain ASCII codes representing text. Each byte in a file may be assigned any value from 0 up to OXFF, uh, hexadecimal FF, or, or 255. A text file just happens to use its bytes to hold ASCII codes. Our diagram here shows a text file containing uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a second view of it over here containing the actual bytes in the file in binary form. Those are the ASCII codes for 0, or excuse me, for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, a question here. This means that fully one-eighth of the data in every text file is in effect wasted, in that it's the same regardless of the text contents. And which data is that? Coming back from a pause, well, the uh, top bit, most significant bit of every byte, is, of course, always a zero if they're ASCII codes, because ASCII codes are always less than 128 um, and thus have a zero bit at the top. So what can we do with the bytes of a file aside from reading and writing ASCII codes? We can make direct copies of memory into them. For instance, if you have an int variable x containing 123,456, which in hex, by the way, would be 0x0001e240, as in the uh, transcript, uh, then you can write that into a file as text using six bytes of the file to contain literally the ASCII values 4950, 51, etc., for the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Or you can write the 4 bytes of memory of X directly into 4 bytes of the file so that it contains OXO, O1, E2, and 4O, a direct binary copy of the content of the variable. Any variable, int, double, array, etc., can be directly copied from memory into the bytes of a file and read back again using functions we'll be looking at shortly. Let's call this binary file I.O. Question two. What happens if I write the integer in binary form to the file and then display the file as text on screen or in an editor? Coming back from a pause there. It will look like gibberish. In particular, the file 
that we have here uh, would be treated as though it contained ASCII codes 0, which is a null, um, 1, which is a control A, uh, E2, which isn't really even a character, and the only one in here that's actually even a valid ASCII code is the uh, 040, uh, or the OX40, and um, it doesn't really have any ASCII significance, though, in this context. So, files with direct copies of internal memory generally make poor text, and printing them results in lucky charms all over your screen. Um, give an example of that just for the fun of it. Um, here's a file we'll be generating in a little bit with a bunch of binary data in it, and there's your lucky charms. A few textual contents in there, but mostly binary data. And all this is just to drive home the point that binary files are very different from text files. Now, to be clear, the same file system is used for either. The description text file or binary file refers to the contents itself, not some property of the file. So, just to drive home the distinction further and, and to get a better grasp on the trade-offs, let's do a bit of thinking on the relative advantages of the text versus binary approach to storing data in a file. And as a model, let's imagine we have an array of 1,000 4-byte integers to write into a file, either in text form, with, say, one integer per line of the file, or in binary form, with exactly 4 bits in the file per integer. I've drawn both cases here in the diagram, um, at least for the first few integers. And don't be fooled by the larger appearance of the binary data, uh, by the way, it's obviously drawn out at the bit level, so of course each 8 bits is the same size as one symbol in the text file. To question 3. Which is faster for the machine to do? Write the ins as text or in binary form? Consider the printf example from the lecture on standardargs.h uh, to look at what it takes to write text, by the way. And after a pause here, the, the answer is, well, it's faster for it to write it in binary, since this involves a simple copy of memory data onto the disk. Writing in human-readable base 10 is really unnatural for a computer. It involves a looping computation, like that for the percent %u format specifier in that example printf function uh, from the varargs.h lecture. The time required to do numerical text I.O. is often overlooked, but it can be important. It gets even worse for floating-point data with decimal points or exponential notation. Writing a double in binary form is a simple 8-byte copy from memory to or from a file. Writing it in textual form involves a loop of double precision computations that is comparable in complexity and time to performing a square root or a trig function. And question four. Which of the two is more machine portable, text or binary? If I write a file on one machine and then read it on another, which form is more universal? Going back from a pause, text is the same on any architecture, but direct memory copies run into endianness issues. If you write a 4-byte int on a little endian machine and then read it on a big endian machine, it will need to have its bytes reversed. This is the only major portability problem, however. Internal representation of integers and of floating point is highly standard across all modern CPUs, modulo the endianness issue, and a padding thing we'll get to in a little bit. The usual convention is to write all binary data in big endian order, placing the burden of reversing the bytes on the little endian machines. Now, this is sometimes called a network order because it's the standard for all binary communications on the Internet. And a side here that bears note in an international software world, text format is not culturally portable because the notation used for fractions differs per culture. Many languages use a comma where English uses a decimal point. Okay, so now which of the two representations is more compact? This is a complex question. You may not find a clear answer either way, but at least think through when one or the other would be more compact. Coming back from a pause, binary is more compact if it takes more than, say, 4 bytes per int to write in textual form. But for small ints, um, text format may be more compact. Importantly for an upcoming question here, text format requires some separator. For instance, a space or maybe an end of line, which is implied here, between the values. 
Well, binary format does not. I've written these one per line for clarity, but there's no extra symbol here to go from line to line. It's just one long sequence of bytes. Integers or other numeric values are of varying length in text form, depending on their value, but they have fixed length in binary form. The unpredictability of length means you can't just jam all the text together, all the text output together, without a separator between each value. Now, as we get further into file operations, we'll find that you do not need to read or write a file from beginning to end. Any operating system allows you to seek within a file, to move directly and quickly to any offset within the file, and read or write data starting at that offset. So files may be randomly accessed, uh, just like arrays. And that leads to question six. Which format is better for random access? If I ask you to get the 500th integer in a file of 1,000 integers, would you rather it be a text or a binary file? Again, coming back from a pause, um, the answer really is that you'd uh, prefer binary because the size of each datum is then predictable. The 500th integer in a binary file starts at offset 499 times 4, or 1,996 to be exact. That's because there are 499 four-byte integers preceding it. The offset of the 500th integer in a text file depends on the number of digits needed for the prior 499 integers, and that can be determined only by reading each one starting with the first. So, summarizing, text is humanly readable and more machine portable. Binary is faster to read and write and is randomly seekable. Size of data is a toss-up, <clears throat> though really in practice binary is a bit more compact because text often includes extra labels and markers. In the next segment, we'll go through a program to translate a text file into an equivalent binary file and introduce the library functions, or technically system calls, for binary file I.O. on Unix.